Hello and welcome to this built-in public chess program. My name is Moises and we are going to program a small software that will be able to play chess with us. Don't expect anything too complicated. It's uh, going to be very easy. In this episode we are going to program the board class and the generic piece. In order to represent the board we are going to use a matrix with these coordinates from 0 to 7 in the x-axis and the same from 0 to 7 in the y-axis. Ok, let's go to the console. Let's create a new crystal app called Chess. Um, crystal is going to bootstrap our project and create the needed files. Now we are going to execute the tests uh, to see what happens. And it's failing because Crystal creates a default test that it's failing. So this is normal. I'm going to remove that test. Ok, and now uh, we are going to start with the piece class. We are going to follow the TTD methodology. So first we are going to create a test for the piece class. I'm going to copy the spec description here. Let me group this into a context just to make it a little bit clear. Depending on the color of the piece. Create then our subject under test that it's going to be the piece class itself. And let me fix uh, this error here, seems that uh, the compiler doesn't know how to locate this file. Ok, let's run the tests again. And we get an error because the piece class is not defined, obviously. Let's create the piece class. Let me put the new class in a vertical split to see the implementation on the tests. And I'm going to put a require to the file in the chess.cr file to load the class at the beginning. Let me check if the piece class is loaded in the tests as well. Ok, it is. So we are going to start to start uh, by the constructor, defining the color of the piece. We have to create a color type and the position of the piece that is going to be a tuple of two integers. And by default we are going to set the position to minus one minus one that it's a position that doesn't exist in the in the board. Let's create a getter for the color. This is a typo. And uh, let's create a, now a color type. That is going to be an enumerable. with white and black options. So we have to require the color type as well. And now I'm going to create a getter and setter for the position attribute. This is called property in Crystal. Okay, since it's a bit annoying to write every time tuple integer integer, uh, let's create a new type alias uh, position.
so now it's better. Let's back to the test and run it again. Now the spec is passing, so let's implement some asserts. It should get a white color. So if we create a new white piece, its color, it should be equal to white. Run the tests and see if it works and it's working. I think that I'm going to provide a factory method uh, to not write the full name space, chess color white. Let's write a method called make white. Is going to re return a piece. So let's change the test according to the new method. Run the tests. And it's working fine. Now we are going to do the same for the black piece. It should get black color. And we are going to provide a make black method as well. run the tests and it's working. Now we are going to test if the position setter is working. Should be able to set a position. Let's make a piece. Then we set a position using the property setter. And we check the expected value. Run the tests and green. Perfect. We are done with the with the piece class. Now we are going to create a board class. Let's create the board spec file as well. and copy the test descriptions. So let me create the board class first. We have to include it in the main file as before. And if we run the tests, the new pending specs are shown. Let's start with the constructor. We are going to use a static array type uh, to create the board cells since the board uh, dimensions are not going to change. The first static array is going to represent the rows eight rows of type static array of piece or nil. 
Let's provide a getter to access to the cells. We have to declare the type here as well. And finally, we are going to initialize the board cells. with nil values. So this is an empty board. Now we are going to create a move method. That is going to be in charge to move pieces in the board. Let's move a piece into a position. So we have to change the position of the piece itself. and put the piece reference in the appropriate coordinates of the board. We forget to make the test first, sorry. Let's, let's check that we can move the piece in the board. Our subject under test is going to be a board instance. Make a random piece. Set an expected position. And we use uh, the move method to place the piece. So if we get the given board position, it has to return the piece itself. We have to implement the get method. So if we split the position in row and column and we get the coordinates in the static array, we should return the piece itself. Let's run the tests. Oh, there is an error here because the type is not is not the correct one. We have to specify piece a question mark that is going to return a piece or nil. And it's failing again. Let me check what's happening here. Okay, I discovered the error. Uh, this is because a static array and regular arrays doesn't work in the same way since each of the row of the static array is another static array. You have to update the whole row. Uh, modify the column and return the modified row. If we run the tests again, It's green. Now we are going to program a method to reset the entire board. That's it, set all the cells to nil. So we are going to create a new piece.
put it in the port at a position. Then reset the port. And then check that the piece is removed from the board. More than that, we are going to check all ever possible cell and ensure that it's empty. If we run the tests, we get an error because the reset method is not implemented. So we create the new method here. Let me copy the initializer code here. And we are going to return nil type. Let's run the tests again. And everything is OK now. Now that we have the reset method, let me reset the board in every test just to ensure that all our tests are in the same state. And let's implement the bound checks for the board. Every time that you try to move a piece out of the bounds, an exception has to be raised. Also, every time that I try to get a piece from an out-of-bounds position, I have to get an error as well. OK, let me copy this code and put uh, an invalid position here. And we are going to expect an out-of-bounds exception here. when we move the piece to the position. OK, I'm going to create a new file to put the exception class. I'm going to win a read from the exception class from Crystal itself. And I'm going to pass the piece. And the position. OK, let me create a couple of getters here to access to the piece and position attributes. And we are going to overload the message method uh, to return a custom message for this exception. Okay, we need here uh, to import the piece class and 
also we have to put it in the main file as before so now that we have the exception uh, we are going to check the bounds in a private method that it's going to return false if the given position is out of bounds. That means uh, less than zero or greater than seven. for rows and columns. And in the move method, we are going to check the bounds and raise an exception. If we run the tests, okay, yeah, we get we get a green. I think that we don't need to pass the piece at all, since we have the position to move. So I'm going to remove the piece from the exception. and the tests are still green. So now uh, we are going to check the bounds in the get method from board class. Almost the same test as before, but ch changing the method from move to get. Let's put something wrong in the position. And run the tests. And it failed because we don't raise any exception. Back to the code and put the same check here. Run the tests again and green. Okay. So the last test for today. Uh, we are going to set up a new board for a game. That means that we are going to put uh, two lines of pieces at the top and two more uh, lines of pieces at the bottom of the board. Every column at row zero has to have a piece.
and has to be the luck. The same for row 1. And the same for row 6. And 7, but with the white pieces. So we run the tests and we get an error because uh, the setup the setup uh, new game method is not implemented. Back to the code and uh, we create it. We are going to reset the board to ensure that everything is empty. And we are going to create a new piece instance for each column and row with the appropriate uh, color. If we run the tests, all green. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, we are going to implement the different pieces and allowed moves for for different for each of.